Hello, hello, Caligra friends. I hope you're doing well today. Aaron here from Nielsen Letters. Um, today is a delightfully foggy day outside. It's raining and kind of cold. So I think it's the perfect day to kind of do a little calligraphy, don't you? I think so. Um, yeah, so today is my last Thursday of teaching uh, Copper Plate. It's not my last day of streaming, um, but the like teaching series that I was doing is this will be the last one. And um, today's going to be the overview slash like quick recap on like everything that we've gone through, hopefully within two hours. <laughs> this is my goal. Uh, we'll see if that actually happens or not. And then once I've done everything, uh, I'm dumb and I forgot to um, scan and put my stuff in my Discord in the last, on my last uh, teaching class. But uh, everything that I do today, I'm going to put into my Discord so you can take a look at it and have exemplars for yourself uh, on your computer and then take a peek at them. Uh, a disclaimer, I am not a master penman. I am just kind of like trying my best to, to kind of spread the spread the knowledge around that I have, um, you know, being someone who does this full time. So, um, all right. If you have any questions as per the usual, just toss it in the chat and we can chit chat about stuff while I go through things. That's totally fine. I think the last time I taught I ended up talking about like Game of Thrones, <laughs> like book recommendations while I was teaching. So like, you know, whatever, it's all good. Um, all right, cool. I'm gonna switch to the three camera setup. So yeah, um, first thing I'm gonna go, go through very quickly, very briefly is the basic tools to do calligraphy. And by calligraphy, I mean specifically pointed pen and specifically uh, my copper plate that I do. So in case you're wondering, because uh, calligraphy kind of encompasses a lot of different types of script. So also it's script, not font. Font is for computers. Scripts are for doing things by hand. Also another thing to clarify. So, um, all right. So I have paper. This is HP premium 32 white. <laughs> I recently got turned on to this. Um, it's just printer paper. But it's like a pretty high quality print paper that takes uh, ink, like loose ink, pretty well. So that, and I printed uh, guidelines off from, it's a website called like Block Layer. They do a bunch of different um, like guidelines for all types of different things. Uh, I specifically just go for their guidelines and I just print off whatever I need. Um, so guidelines are important when doing calligraphy, uh, especially when you're starting, because we want to make sure that our proportions are good and uh, the proportions for uh, copper plate specifically, it's um, whatever your X height is. Your X height is this in here. So the, the line we'll be writing on is this one. This is our baseline as I'm going down because I'm watching my computer as I do this. This is a baseline. This is a waistline. This is an A center height, and this is the D center uh, line. And in between here is the X height. Whatever this distance is, here and here is this times 1.5. So this one here is seven millimeters. So this is 10.5, and this is 10.5. Very briefly, there we go. Paper. I'll unzoom a little bit more. We have a pen holder. I like using an oblique pen holder for uh, copper plate. I know other people use. A straight pen holder but this is how I got taught now if I try and use a straight one so a straight one is one that has the nib coming out uh, straight this way and not having this is a flange not having a flange on it kind of, this is a straight pen holder this is an oblique I prefer the oblique some for the straight I'm not the police I'm not gonna come after you for using one or the other to do your scripts I just prefer the oblique one uh, and then the nib which is this guy right in here my favorite right now is an EF principle, which is what's in here right now. A lot of people, when they start, they use a Nico G, which is, look how my beauty guru is. This is a Nico G. Um, this is how a nib works. When you press down, the tines open, ink drops. And then when you're going up, there's no pressure. So that's where you get your hairlines from. 
da, 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 ink or paint or whatever. Uh, for beginners, I usually suggest using Higgins Eternal. Uh, not the waterproof, no waterproof inks here for me. I know some people like them. I can't stand them. They just drive me crazy. So no waterproof ink. Um, they, they're pain. They're hard to clean. They ruin my nibs. I don't like them. Um, I prefer Higgins Eternal if I'm practicing. Um, I also got, I'm a, a sponsored artist from uh, Ferris Wheel Press, which is an ink company. So I'm going to be using one of theirs today because I, I like it and I have it. <laughs> so it may as well. It's a nice fun green color. Uh, it's the Morningside Mint, which is fun considering it's like kind of gray outside. I was like, oh, I'll use a little color today. So that ink, it's usually for like fountain pens and stuff, but it could work well, it works well for a calligraphy too. So that, uh, also if you want to follow along with me, you absolutely can. You don't need a pen holder. You don't need a nib. You don't need ink. You don't need any of that stuff. You can totally do everything with a pencil. So like, don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, you can just take a paper and like take a ruler and put some lines down and then you can kind of at least follow along the basic movements if you want to do that. Um, when I was going through the first few classes of mine, I always started with a warm up. Uh, I don't want to do that today just cause like it's going to end up tacking on a lot of time. Um, but normally I'll do like a warm up for a good, like five, 10 minutes or so before doing the circles with my whole arm. It's like ovals, some figure eight, like infinity lines, like just to control the line. Um, if you're curious about those ones, like everything I do on Twitch or I'm going to go with 90% of the stuff that I put on Twitch. I usually also just like export directly to YouTube. I don't do any editing. I'm not an editor. Okay. But I, I, so I just go like export to YouTube <laughs> and like, I'll adjust the description kind of thing, but it's pretty much the extent of my editing, uh, prowess on the internet. So, but if you do want to see any of those things, you can just go to my YouTube and, and go and look and see what that looks like. Uh, and on YouTube, there won't be any music on those ones because I was a fun genius person. You only get the music when I'm, when I'm leave, uh, streaming live. Um, cause even though I usually listen to, to, uh, to playlists that are like, um, DMCA free, I get copyright stricken anyways. So I'm just like, well, unfortunately, YouTube and after plays on like Twitch don't get the music because I just don't feel like dealing with any of that stuff. So anyways, um, there should be some music playing in the background now. I think it should be working. Fingers crossed. Uh, okay. So let me see. I have my little notes here. I'm just paying attention, making sure. Uh, oh yeah. Another paper that you, that you can use if you're using, uh, like a loose ink, like a, like a Higgins or Fierce Will Press or whatever, uh, should be like a smooth paper, especially if you're beginning. I like to give myself hard work and I do a lot of calligraphy that's pointed pen on really, really, really textured paper. Um, just cause I like a challenge, I guess, but I also think it looks really nice. Uh, but it is very difficult to do so without like your nib just going everywhere. So make yourself like, uh, make your life easy. Don't do that off the bat. Like go for really smooth paper and don't stress about it. That cool. Um, you like, usually Canson marker layout paper is fairly easily and readily available. Um, oh yes. And then the 55 degrees. So yeah, you'll see in my guidelines here, there's like a faint, um, like slanted line. This it's at 55 degrees because specifically copper plate is done at 55 degrees. So this is just to help to make sure that the lines remain consistent throughout the word and you don't all of a sudden have wonky letters going back and forth unless that's what you want to do. So let me put on my professional glove. Um, I've had some questions about these things. I usually just, it's Amazon. Uh, and the reason why I wear this is because, uh, your hand has natural oils on it. Um, and which will deposit onto the paper. And then if you go over with an ink, uh, the inks most of the time won't adhere, uh, to the paper and it just looks weird. So I've just gotten into the habit of wearing one of these guys. Uh, they're like 10 bucks for a pack of five or 10 or something on Amazon. So I just got those guys. It's no problem. 
And because they're black, you don't see if there's any inkers <laughs> or if they get dirty. It's just fine. Um, because a lot of calligraphers will use like a scrap of paper or like a, a playing card or something on their hand to, to either keep things moving smoothly or um, to make sure that like the oils don't get transferred. However, when um, I tried to do that, I've knocked th those papers into my wet ink and ruined what I've been doing. So I'm like, I need a better solution. So the glove is for me. It also makes me look like I know what I'm doing which is also super fun. Um, cool, 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 cool. All right, basic strokes. So for copper plate, there are eight basic strokes. And these basic strokes make up your, uh, all, all of your minuscule letters. So I, I might need to add some gum arabic to this. Let me just do a little testy test to see if this bleeds. And I think we're good. All right, cool. Are we good? Give me two seconds. I'm just gonna add a little bit of gum arabic to the, to the ink. So gum arabic, I think it's what, it's a binder or something. Anyways, uh, it's usually a, a, a nice solution for a bunch of stuff uh, when it's too watery. Uh, I have like a little tiny... Ah, here it is. I don't even know what this measurement is, but it's like the tiniest little spoon ever. Like, look how small this is. Um, just to scoop out. The powdered, uh, there's a powdered gum arabic and liquid gum arabic. I sh I have the liquid one somewhere. The powdered one was closer for me to grab in my drawer. So essentially it's just going to help to bind my ink a bit better so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't feather on the page. Here, I'll show you. Uh, you can also tell that I care a lot about this particular pen holder, it's plastic, so it doesn't matter. I always use it to just stir my inks. Just so it will dissolve. I had already added a little bit, but I had put more ink in there uh, before, so I've gotten a little bit probably too diluted. All right, good enough. I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. All right, so we're gonna start, like I said, we're gonna start the basic strokes. So there's eight, eight of them. Just move this over so you see me while I move over. So the first one is an entry stroke, which is a light, you're barely touching the paper and you're going up. So we have an entry stroke, then we have a down stroke. Oh. There we go. This one was a bit crooked. Oh, this one is, I think, we're gonna get some real nice close-up shots. <laughs> there we go. Ignore these ones. So we have this one. Or we have this one. So these are down strokes. So this is stroke number one. These ones are stroke Number two. Uh, then we have the A sender, A sender loop. So this is number three. We have the D sender. Oh, I am not straight. There we go. D sender loop. Then we have the overturn. Then 
then we have the underturn. Then we have a compound curve. Then we have our oval. So those are our eight strokes. So oh, it is still feathering a little bit. I need to add a little bit more. That's all right for the purposes of what we're doing. It's not doesn't matter that much. But uh, yeah, so all of these put together, your entry stroke, your downstroke, your uh, descender curve, or descender loop, sorry, your ascender loop, your overturn, underturn, compound curve, and oval. These eight basic strokes make up all of your minuscule letters. Um, so let's go eight. I'm not the best at writing normally <laughs> with a pointed pen. So these are eight basic strokes. Um, what's important in these is that the the down the the thicker shaded line should be at should be at the 55 degree. So when you're looking here, they should all be at the 55. So this one's not perfect. I should have pulled it back a little bit more and gone back out again. This one's good. This one's good. This one's okay. Uh, the oval too is like okay, but yeah, these are the eight basic strokes. Now we can go into the letter groups. Um, moving along, this is good. Because <laughs> there's a lot of information to go through. Uh, cool, so this is gonna be So when you're doing the uh, like when you're doing the alphabet, you're not learning it in A to Z format. You're learning it in uh, like letter groups because these groups are have very similar characteristics to them. So it makes it easier to practice versus uh, practicing them in alphabetical order. Um, so group one consists of I, T, I have it written down, sorry, I, T, J, A, D, G, N, M, U, and Y. So an A is an entry stroke plus, or actually we're going to do I first. Actually, so the entry stroke, so it's an entry stroke plus an underturn and then a little dot equals equals the letter I. Uh, so I like to dot the I by like a little press and flick. Uh, other people like to dot the I by doing a little dot. I don't particularly care either way. So then we have the letter T. So the T is an entry stroke plus another underturn, but the underturn starts out higher above the waistline. So I would say probably about a third up. So entry, under turn, and then plus a little, we're gonna cross the T. Equals, entry stroke, under turn, then we're crossing the T. Uh, something that I always try and make sure, I I miss sometimes though, um, is the squaring off of the top. Uh, so that means up here that this is a sharp square. 
not like this guy, which was not. There, now it's better. So, and you can see entry stroke, entry stroke, under turn, under turn, just starting a little bit higher. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna cross it. Then we're doing the letter J, which is an entry stroke plus a, a descender loop that comes up into the exit stroke. And then we're having a little either a press and flick motion or, or a dot. So entry stroke, descender loop, up, and here little flick. Uh, so when you're crossing the line of the J, I usually cross below the baseline versus right at the baseline. I find it looks too squished. Uh, I also have the habit, I'm trying not to do it here, but I, I do it anyway sometimes. Um, when I do my entry stroke or my exit stroke, I usually break the waistline or the baseline down here. Uh, I find it gives the my letters more more movement, more air to them. But, you know, not everyone does that. That's like a me weird quirk that I have that I picked up actually from Pat Blair, uh, the one of the former White House calligraphers. I'd taken a class with her um, a little while, like during quarantine. And that's what she does. I was like, I like this. I'm stealing this. <laughs> What's the saying? You steal like an artist. <laughs> T and then J. So like I said, if you are wanting to follow along with me with any of this stuff, you can totally do this with a pencil. Um, it's just when you're going up and away, just don't press on it, keep it light. And then we're coming back down again, like start like press on the lead and you'll get a bit of a thicker line. So then you can kind of mimic what I'm doing, but with a pencil. Uh, okay, we're gonna do the letter A. So the letter A is an entry stroke plus an oval plus an under turn is your A. So entry, So I restarted that here because my entry stroke, I was like piercing that little, that, that oval that I had going on here. Uh, it should be more like it's leaning on it. We're not trying to pierce it like a balloon. <clears throat> so let me try that again. That's a bit better. There's your A, and then your D is going to be almost the same. So we're entry stroke, oval, and then underturn, but the underturn is starting up higher. Um, the underturn is about halfway between the the A center line and the waistline. So there's your letter D. But it's essentially the same as the A. It just starts out higher, right? Then we do the letter G. So the G is very similar, which is, like I said, this is why we do in, in letter groups versus in, uh, in alphabet order, because it just becomes easier to practice. So the letter G, entry stroke, plus oval, plus we're doing that descender loop, which I'm crossing just underneath the uh, baseline. Equals. RG. There we go. And now we're going to do the letter N. So an N is an overturn 
plus a compound curve. Overturn. Compound curve. We have our letter N. So our letter M, which is our next one in the group A, is an overturn plus another overturn plus a compound curve. So equals overturn, overturn, compound curve. We have a letter M. I hope everyone is, like I know I'm going quickly, but like I said, like I've gone I've gone through these very slowly. I did group A, I think, on my second stream. I think it took me or the sorry, group one, I I think I did it in like two and a half hours. It was like pretty long. So you know, if you have um but you might have questions while I'm going through. Feel free to drop them in the chat, like I said. I'm totally open for questions. But um, I, like I said, I know I also know I'm going quickly. But if you want to go through a more like in-depth thing, I have previous content that has all those things like very slowly, meticulously broken down. <laughs> I just wanted there to have like one video of me doing all of it all at once instead of having to be like, well, if you go to video number blah, 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 whatever, it's just like go to this one at like maybe this particular like minute timestamp and then you'll be able to find the information you're looking for, you know? Plus it's kind of fun. I like doing these things. They're cool. Give me something uh, to look forward to on Thursdays. Uh, okay, cool. So the letter U is an entry stroke plus an underturn plus another underturn equals a U. Pretty simple. It's just, it's so funny, I find too, like even though I know that this is how this works, it doesn't look like this should make a letter until you literally shove them all together. <laughs> uh, also something, <clears throat> it's maybe a bit more technical, but um, when you're doing your entry stroke, if for example, the uh, letter that you're doing the entry stroke to is uh, an oval, you sh which is why my entry stroke doesn't go all the way up to the line here. I kind of leave it here, so then when I bring the line down, it meets it. Because otherwise, if you were to bring it all the way up, it would like stick up over here, which I don't like. Um, whereas if you're doing like a U, I'm bringing the line like pretty much all the way up to the waistline. So something to keep in mind. This one is a little bit a little bit too poking poking the balloon, but. I'm not perfect. I'm not a typewriter or a computer. So there's going to be a little imperfections on, any, on, on everything that you do when you're doing it by hand all the time. Uh, all right. And group one will be finished with the letter Y. So the letter Y is a compound curve plus a descender loop. However, I for me, so I'll do it the proper way. When I do my Y, I don't, I personally have picked this up from another calligrapher too. Like I, I'm telling you, I steal from different people that I've taken classes with because I like the way that they do things. Um, from Rachel Yallop, she does her Ys uh, this way, which is like compound curve still but instead of squaring it off, she'll start from above it at a point and then do this way. I like this much better, I find, because a lot of times a Y is at the end of a word. And I find that this kind of just looks more delicate when you're coming from a point than from a, a, a blunt squared top. But um, yeah, there's both ways to do it. Let me do this one a little bit better though, because my hand got, because I have a, 
um, in French, a, a trombone, but a, a paper clip at the bottom here. And my, my glove kind of got a little bit caught on it, so my spacing is a bit weird right there. It's a bit too tight. Let me move my, there we go. So, compound curve. There we go, that's better. Still a bit tight, but not as tight as this guy. This guy has a bit more room to breathe as or. All right, cool. So that was group one, and I'll do them at the bottom down here. Do them all in a row. So it's gonna be the letter I. The letter T. I was gonna do a little, a little swoopy, a little swoopy. The letter J. The letter A. Oh, that D is not good. That is what she said. Nope. There we go. That's better. Uh, D. Oof, I'm running out of space. Right, let's try and make these. Let's try and make them all fit. G. N. I was gonna make an M because I was thinking. I was thinking about the next letter instead of the one I was doing. M. M. We're gonna do the U here. U and then Y. Here we go. Group one. Now, on to group two. <laughs> oh, actually, let me let me just zoom out so you can see my page. Nice and straight. So, hopefully that is good. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, redo uh, these pages for Discord because it's a bit messy. Maybe I'll leave it because that's how it really does look. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes calligraphy is a bit messy. Not gonna lie. All right, so group. So actually, let me title it group two, just to be really fancy. So the group two is only four letters. It's L, H, K, and E. So the L is the entry stroke plus an ascender loop that goes back up into uh, an exit stroke. Oh, is this too bright? Do I have to turn this one off? I think I might. Hold on, let me try and adjust this because I just saw it was kind of being a bit overexposed. Is that okay? Maybe? Hopefully. Uh, all right, 
So entry, a center loop, into the exit, into the exit stroke. So the weight of the L for me, I try and keep it in the middle of the, in between the ascender and the waistline, or baseline rather. I try and keep the thickest part right in the middle here. So that's an L. Then we have a K. Uh, so there's a couple ways to do the K. I'll show two. So which is an entry stroke, an ascender loop, bringing it down. We're not bringing it up again. We're going to end it down here. And then one way is to come from the middle up and around and doing a little like a dot. And then here up, down and up and away, like a, a very small uh, compound curve right there. So that's one way you can do it. Or entry stroke, a center loop down coming from the middle up, curling it over, coming back down, and then going back up again. Another like mini compound curve. Uh, I have an easier time doing this one than I do this one. So I, I do prefer this guy because I have a little bit of an easier time on it, but sometimes people prefer this guy. Uh, as long as your uh, weight your thick lines here are on the 55 on both of them excuse me sorry about that Oof. it's a bit dry in the apartment now because even though it's raining outside so it's like a bit humid I have all the windows and stuff closed so anyways um, yeah what was I saying sorry so these compound curves these thick lines here should align with the 55 degree that's here Uh, and then we have the letter E. So it's an entry stroke in, and it's kind of like a mini L a bit. So we're coming in, we're going here, like we're coming in, we're stopping, we're going here, we're coming back up around and then going up again. So that the thickness here is along the 55 degree line. Uh, what we don't wanna do is this, because this looks weird. This looks more proportional. So not this, we're doing that. Cool. There we go. Sorry, it's cur it, it looks like it's curving more than it is because my, my paper itself, you can see on the camera on the bottom, you can see my paper is curving, so it gives the illusion like I'm really off, but it's not too bad. Um, which is why I like having that camera there so you see what I'm doing like with my nib. Because I find, I find some, this is, so this is just like a, a me going on a bit of a tangent, so I hope you don't mind. But um, whenever I do classes online, for specifically for calligraphy, because there's so many right now because of COVID. Um, most teachers only have this camera, the one that faces straight down, which can sometimes be hard to tell what they're doing because you don't see the side of their nib and of their pen. Whereas if we were in a workshop in person, you can kind of see a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, this is why I have, that's why I have this camera on the bottom. So you can tell that my, my paper is curling up a bit because there's just, there's a fairly big stack. So anyways, little tangent, little, little baby tangent. So let me, so up and then up and down and up again. That's a bit better. Voila, voila. That was group two, only four little letters for group two. All right, so let's do group uh, three, which is one, two, three, four. So group three is six letters. Two, let's do the word. Two, and then also three. <laughs> 
So we're doing the letter B. So the letter B I do in like two or three different ways. Um, I'll show you all. So we're gonna go entrance stroke, a center loop, down, and then up again, kind of like an L. And then you can you do a little filled in dot right here. And then you go back up again. So that's a B. This B, not a lot of people use, or calligraphers use, but visually when you're seeing it, it's not always immediately legible, like what letter that is, because <laughs> it's no one, like that's not, you don't see that one very often. Um, so I picked this one up from, I don't remember, somewhere, I guess, where I go down, but then I go back up again. And I kind of curl it into itself. Uh, when we get to the letter C in a couple letters from now, it kind of looks like an, whoop, when you flip the paper over, that little loop that I do looks like an upside down C. Or the other one is entry stroke, a center loop, down. We're coming back up and over again like we did before, but instead of stopping here, we're going and then we're coming back up and we're crossing back on itself. So it kind of looks, when you flip it over, there we go, like a letter E. And then we have a letter C. A good way to kind of double check your work is to flip things over and see what it looks like. But that's what we're aiming for. There we go. Uh, cool. Then we have I the letter O. The letter O is pretty easy peasy because it is an oval with an entry stroke and an exit stroke. So we're going up here. We're doing our oval and coming back on itself. And right here, I do a little a little filled in dot, and then I. Bring it back up and away again. So there's two ways that I can, I do the O. Uh, I I do it this way, where I start my oval from uh, like a 12 p.m. If we're thinking of this like a clock, or I start it at 11 o'clock when I come over. So wherever I start, it's like a one o'clock. I'm coming over, going down, and meeting it back at itself, and then where they meet is. Uh, the exact spot where you put your little filled in dot and then your exit stroke. I got taught this way. I started doing this way not so not so long ago and I'm starting to prefer this way now. So, you know, pick your poison. Whichever one you want to do, you go for it. Uh, oh, then we have a V. Letter V. So the letter V is a compound curve. Bring it back up again. We're doing a filled in dot and then an exit stroke. So I'll do that again. Compound curve, filled in stroke, exit. Uh, filled in dot, exit stroke. Uh, I usually pop it above the waistline versus keeping it underneath. I find it looks a little bit too squished when it's all uh, underneath, especially because there's the weight right here. So that's why I do that. Then we have the W which is an entry stroke, an under turn, plus another under turn. Wait, am I doing this right? Hold on, my brain just kind of fritzed out for a second. Oh god, I hate when that happens. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm just dumb. It's awesome. Don't worry about it. I, my brain just literally fritzed. Cool. Yeah, so entry stroke, under turn, under turn, and then we have that same little filled in dot and then away. My brain literally just didn't understand what was happening <laughs> for like a second. Did I just have a stroke? Oh my god. <laughs> What I feel like. I feel like I just had like a little mini stroke, like nothing was functioning. Anyway, so yes, a W. This is what this should look like. Cool. 
Uh, then we have the letter C, which is an entry stroke. Then we're gonna start the C kind of like we were gonna start an oval like for the O, which is from up here. We're pressing or pulling away. Then we're gonna go back in and kind of just add a little weight right here. And then all of a sudden it's a C. So it's like a, it's this and then plus, plus like a little pulling down and then adding a little, it looks like a bit of a, a teardrop almost right in here. Uh, and then we're doing our letter R. So we're going up, filling in the dot, and then away. So entry stroke, filled in dot, almost, we're coming down like it's a ski slope. Like it's not a, what we're not doing is this. Um, I know that this is legible, um, but this is more like a cursive or handwriting R in my opinion. This is more copper plate calligraphy. It should also be touching the baseline, which it's not. So we're going up, down, and then up again. We're not looping it back up to itself, up to the baseline. We're coming down like it's a little slope and then we're pressing and then pulling away from itself. They're pushing away from itself rather. Uh, cool. Now we're doing number four. So number four are the weird exception letters. Uh, like the letter F. So the letter F, the exposure on my iPad is getting a little bit intense. Anyways, uh, so entry stroke, we're coming up to a center loop and we're bringing it down about to halfway between the baseline and then the decenter. And then right here, this is where that's a weird stroke that we haven't done before. So right about here, we're gonna press release and then push away. So then that becomes your F. Uh, it's not a super common one in like regular everyday writing anymore. So, but there is this one, which is similar to a cursive one that I also like to throw into my work sometimes. Which is this guy. So entry stroke, a center loop, bring it all the way down turning back on itself. It's like uh, the mirror image of a descender loop. Bring it up here to the to the baseline and then moving away from yourself. So what's important is we're looking at here the the entry stroke and the exit stroke are parallel to each other and then most of the weight of this line is in the middle because I like to I don't like to start it being super thick at the top here. I kind of like to ease into it thick and then start releasing pressure and then coming back up and going out again. So now we're doing our letter P. So the letter P, there's a, like the B, there's a couple of different um, ways to do it, so I'll show you them. So we're doing entry stroke, a down stroke, and we're stopping about here, which is like kind of where we stopped where we, with the F. And then we're doing a compound curve. This one's not used very often. Again, this is a bit like older school. Not always legible. So the other ones that I like to do are essentially what I do for the B, which is we're doing entry stroke, down stroke, coming up over like an upside down C, or entry stroke, down stroke, coming up over, and then instead of stopping, we're bringing it back over itself, and then we're crossing. So it looks like an upside down E. So it depends on what look you're looking for. This one is definitely more traditional. These ones are a bit more modern. Take your pick. I usually, this is actually really fun when you do double letters that you can make slight changes. Like if it's the word happy, for example, you can do both like two different kinds. Uh, then you're not, you, you remove the pressure of having to make them look exactly the same. So a little tip, a little trick. Then we're doing the letter Q. Entry stroke, 
oval up on itself. And then we're bringing it down and we're essentially doing the opposite of what we did with the J. So instead of bringing the decenter loop to the left, going down or to the right, bring it back up to the baseline just underneath and then away from yourself. Now we're doing an S, which also has th three, eh, like two, two and a half variations on it that I do. So entry stroke, filled in dot, kind of like that upside down C again here. And the other one is entry stroke, upside down dot, like an upside down C, but the dot is on the inside instead of on the outside, like here. Or entry stroke, filled in dot, down, and then up again. So we're looking at like the upside down E. Uh, and then we have the letter X, which is kind of my nemesis. I'm not a humongous fan of doing it. However, because I'm in Montreal, I have to write in French sometimes. So X's are kind of everywhere. So I just have to get over myself. Uh, so the letter X is like two C's uh, back to back. So we're going entry stroke, coming in on itself like this. And even though we're going down, we're not pressing. There's no weight on this yet because the weight is coming on this side. And if both sides were thick, it would just be a big blob of ink right here. But yeah, it's essentially like it's kind of flipped mirrored image of two C's. That's one version of the X. The other one is like an entry stroke into like a weird compound curve. It's a bit more extended. And then you're pressing and you're going like this. Um, this one, this compound curve doesn't respect the proportions of the other compound curves because we're having it, we're adding another stroke in here. So at the end of the day, if you're writing a long word, what you're looking for when the word is together is that all of the strokes touch within the same distance apart from each other when you're writing like the word uh, xylophone or something. So if you were to do this as a true compound curve where it's touching closer here, then you throw in another stroke, all of a sudden it looks like really squished. So you kind of have to break the rules here and pull it out a bit more wide. Then you add your other stroke and then all of a sudden like here, this line, this line, this line, and then whatever words come after, all of a sudden they're uh, equally spaced. Then the last one is the letter Z. So we're coming up here, entry stroke, coming back on itself like that uh, upside down uh, C in like a B and a P and the S. But then instead of you know, continuing on, we're going here and then we're dropping it down as a um, decenter loop. Then there's also this one, which is, this one's over, this one goes up into a filled in dot, and then we're going down again and up. Uh, so this guy is easier than this one, if you're looking for ease. This one definitely. And then the good old, like, regular Z. <laughs> if you're having trouble doing these guys, this guy should be pretty easy. Um, it's not a copper plate Z, but sometimes you just need to add something that looks a little bit uh, easier. Like maybe you don't want D centers for some reason. It's a pretty okay option to use that guy. So we zoom through group one through four. That's the whole alphabet. So what I'll do is I will hopefully try and do this all in one shot and I will do the alphabet in order. So you can also see uh, the, I'll actually zoom out a bit. It's a bit too tight inside here. I think that's also why the exposure is being a bit weird. Anyways, I'll do it all, hopefully in one shot, hopefully all together, and then you'll be able to see as well the um, spacing in between the, the letters, 
and hopefully consistency and I haven't just jinxed, my, jinxed myself so So, did that really fast? Uh, it doesn't look too bad. But you definitely get the point for sure. Um, so yeah, consistency of the width of all of this is uh, not bad of all the, all the shades. Um, my A center loops are not consistent. So like this should have been over here starting instead of here should have been here like that. Uh, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. Essentially what I did with the F is where I should have been consistently everywhere. But yeah, overall you get a good, a pretty good idea of what I'm aiming for and what the spacing should be. So uh, when you're looking at it for spacing wise, it's whenever the letters touch the baseline the space in between here should be even. So I think I did that pretty well. Yay me, pat on the back. Good for me. So now that we've done group one through four, that's my next one. Ah, yes, numbers. Numbers. I've been streaming for now. Okay, cool. I was like, I think I can get this done in two hours. Doing good. My timing is not bad. Uh, 
so yeah, numbers. Uh, I usually keep my numbers pretty simple, honestly. I don't spend a lot of time on them. Um, I don't use them super often. I haven't addressed stuff in a long time just because of COVID. Uh, not a lot of people are getting married right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, so number one and number two uh, in Canada, it's a mix of numbers and letters for our postal code um, versus just, just straight numbers like if you were in the States. So I don't do numbers often specifically right this second. So I usually keep it simple. I don't try and go too crazy with them. I am not ma'am Suzanne Cunningham. I am not her, who is an excellent calligrapher, uh, who does wonderful work. And if anyone wants to go follow her on Instagram, you should go do that because she's great. Um, a, a wonderful um, inspiration, honestly. I'm <laughs> like, I wish one day. But I think she's been doing calligraphy probably longer than I've been alive. So uh, the number one, It's like an entry stroke we're going to here and then we're bringing it back down again. So it's kind of like an entry stroke, a long entry stroke and then a down stroke. Then for the number two, pulling down, up, over, pressing. It's it's kind of hard to describe as I'm doing it. It's easier actually if you just kind of watch me. Um, so I'll just kind of just do it I think and I won't narrate it I think I'm just gonna do it because it's, it's just you just need to look at it you just need to watch me do it There we go. I don't go super fancy with them. Like I said, I keep it really simple. I keep it really just, we're not going, we're not going overboard. Cause like I said, the amount of times that I actually write numbers is not that much. So I'm not going to try and be the best at the doing the numbers thing. I focus more on doing the letters. Um, I mean, these are perfectly, they're passable. Let's just put it, they're passable. They're fine. Oh yeah, and I wanted to do double letters. That was the other thing too. So, because I had briefly mentioned it with the two P's. So, um, when you're doing double letters, for example, like two L's, actually, that's a great example of what not to do, actually. Like this one, it's, like you can see it right here, it's really tough to get two side by side looking exactly the same. And this one, same thing, it's like not great. So usually what I try and do, because I like to cheat it and it's just a lot easier that way, I try and make them on purpose look different than each other, not by accident. Because this is like, your eye clocks it really quickly that they don't look the same. So you can do a little entrance stroke to do L number one and then L number two. Or you can do a regular one like this here. And maybe your second one is a bit different and maybe it goes this way. So it just kind of depends on what you want to do, but I always recommend when you have two letters together, try and make one of them different than the other on purpose. Uh, it will just make your life a lot easier instead of trying to focus on making them look exactly, exactly, exactly perfect, especially if you're starting out, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that's okay. That's fine. And I want you to know that it's fine. <laughs> it took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that like I'm not a computer and it's not going to be perfect at all times. Um, okay, another double letters that come up often are two Fs. So because I had shown you two different variations of the letter F, just shove them together. There we go. Two letter Fs. Uh, you can also do Maybe you do two that do have the, the um, 
loop on the bottom, but maybe you kind of flourish it somehow. Maybe not like that because it looks a bit weird, but. Or maybe. No, you go completely the other way. You know, and you do it this way instead. So there's some examples there. Uh, yeah, so let me do a double P for that same kind of reason. So we're doing a traditional P and then maybe we do a not so traditional P. So this one I went a little bit even crazier. This one I added some flourishing. So I essentially, instead of starting right here so strict, I, I gave it a point and I started here. And then I flourished it out, trying to keep that oval shape. And then did like one of my variations for the letter P. So this works really well when you're writing a word like happy. like on a birthday card or something. You know, something like that could be really fun because then you get a little, a little more movement, it's a little more interesting to look at uh, versus something that's kind of stagnant. It just kind of, kind of depends on what the look is you're looking for. But I, like I said, I, I encourage uh, not having the same ones next to each other. And then the last ones I'll do is, I know there's a lot of double letters, but the last one I'll do is um, the letter S. And for that same thing, you know, or maybe, maybe you do, maybe you go even more crazy. You go really over and you do it like this. Oh, hey Mar, how's it going? Doing a little teaching today, myself going through all the stuff I've gone through over the last 10 weeks in about two hours. <laughs> there we go. So we have our numbers, we have a, a few double letters. Like I said, we're trying to keep it, um, keep it interesting, I think would be my motto, to kind of keep it interesting and have some, have some variety, you know? Uh, I'm trying to think of like if there's a word that has a lot of double letters in it. I think this is a pretty good. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm using the Ferris wheel press today. This is in my inkwell already, and I figured I may as well use it. The Morningside Mint color. It actually uh, is a pretty close color to my follower goal, green, which is fun. Listen, I have it. May as well use it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. It's a really fun color, especially because it's kind of a dreary day over here today. It's kind of raining. So I was like, ah, color, colored ink would be nice to use today, I think. Another inker, though, Someone Does someone else do calligraphy on, on Twitch? I need to know who they are. I need to go and follow them because I haven't seen anyone else doing it. Tell me their username, please. <laughs> oh, an ink artist. Okay, got it. Uh, cool. So now that I've done numbers... So what did I do here? So let's let's just go quickly over what we did already before I go into the magic cues. We did basic strokes. We did our first, our groups, our letter groups one through four. We did numbers. We did double letters. Now we're going on to majuscules. But yeah, I'm not surprised, by the way, on my own uh, viewer count that my viewer count is low. For whatever reason, in the afternoon, especially when I start at 3.30 Eastern, it's always low. 
I do better in the morning, but I just couldn't stream this morning. So it's all good though. I just, uh, I wanted to uh, kind of finish off my teaching with uh, a class of, um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like kind of like workshop style. I'm just like finish off with like, this is everything that I've done all in one video. So if anyone wants to go look for it, you can just kind of watch it all in one shot. Oh yeah, link your link tree again. I think I may have bookmarked it somewhere, but I don't remember. Ooh, you have found a calligrapher, which one? I need to find them. Cause I've seen there's bad, bad calligraphy or something like that is on here. And oh yeah, I had, uh, I had bookmarked it. Or like the bad, the bad clicker. There's one. Anyways, there's so much like swears a lot, and it's kind of funny. And then one other one, I think. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm always looking. I'm like, who else is on here? Can I befriend you? <laughs> uh, I know that there's a guy that. I don't, I haven't seen him in a while, but he was streaming when I had started streaming at around the same time and he would stream with his budgies. <laughs> the most difficult task. Well, we're now we're going into magic schools, which is like not my forte. So we're going to, we're going to go through it anyway. So we're going to work through it together. So there is a couple basic strokes with magic schools. Not as many as the mini skills, which are eight, but these are the ones that I use most often. So the big, the big one, it's called the line of universal beauty, which kind of starts up here. Actually, I'll zoom back in a little bit more. Is up here. And essentially it's like a downstroke, but with a curve and a curve. So it's gonna be a curve pressing. Oops, that was not very good. Curve straight and then curve out again. Oh, don't worry about it. That's cool. You let me know when you find them. <laughs> so curve, straight, and curve out again. So this is your line of universal beauty. There you go, I fixed it a little bit. Oh, noted. I had it, uh, it was looking okay on my uh, on my end. How's that uh, sound a little bit better? Hopefully I'm a little bit clearer now. I think I was also not speaking very loud as well. Cool, thanks for telling me, appreciate it. So the line of universal beauty is kind of the, the one that gets used the most often. Uh, so we're just going to go A to Z. We're going to move through it quickly and do that fast. Again, you can always follow along with a pencil if you feel like you want to want to do it. It's all good. So letter A, we're doing line of universal beauty. So the way that I've started doing my A's is not, but I don't think people do this normally. It's just, I like the aesthetic of it. So, we're doing line of universal beauty, but we're not starting at the A center line up here. We're starting a little bit further down and then we're moving away and then we're coming up here thin to thick and then over under like this. That's how I do my A's. It's a bit complicated to like kind of explain as I'm going along and doing it, but I mean, you can see it. You can see what I did. So the most important thing for me is that these two lines here are parallel at the thickest point. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Streamlabs likes to welcome everyone more than once sometimes. Streamlabs is so buggy sometimes. It's so weird. <laughs> so letter A. Now we have the letter B. So the letter B is also line of universal beauty, but we are going to start at the A center line on the top here. So we go like that, 
Line of Universal Beauty, we're going to do kind of an overturn up and then down here. So Line of Universal Beauty, overturn coming up into a kind of an ovally loop uh, towards the um, waistline, coming up and back over again a little bit farther out than the top loop here and into itself again. Then we're going to do uh, the letter C. Oh, did I just get a missed call? I did just get a missed call. All right, sorry, I have to take this one. Give me a sec, I'll be R B. Sorry about that. Anyway, I just had a phone call. I had to take, so apologies for the delay. But I'm back. And I'm going to move through this because in about 30 minutes, uh, I have a delivery coming, which is what the call was for. So, <laughs> and I'll have to, I'll, I will have to be off of Twitch. So we're gonna, we're going to motor through the uh, magic skills. All right, cool. So the magic skill C is a, C curve that goes up and then down and then up again. Doing that. The D is a line of universal beauty. Then it's a flat oval. It goes up again and then down and here. So this shape and this shape are the same. They just start from a different place because this one starts down then up and over. Whereas this one is coming from this direction and then down and up. So which is why the, the, there's a shade that's in a different place because the shade will be here because this is where I'm pressing down. And then this one is coming up and over and it's shaded here because this is where I'm pressing down. Cool. I just see this. I'm going to go and I'm going to follow Where are you, sir? Can I follow you? Ah, there you are. Follow. Follow. Perf. Love it. Do you have a schedule yet for him? Sweet. All right, cool. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
Don't worry about it being too long to find his name. It's fine. I've just followed him. He has a fourth follower now. Excellent. Love it. More of us are coming. I don't know him, so I'm actually going to go poke around and see if I can find him on Instagram. All right, so letter E. The letter E kind of starts like the magic skill C. So we're doing C curve up, down, and then up and down again. So we're having a lot of ovals with the letter E. For sure. I think we can see that. It's a bit fine. The lines are really fine, which is actually why I like these inks, is because I can get really thin hairlines. But I think we can see them on stream. We're good. So the letter F is a line of universal beauty. We're doing like a cap almost. We're coming up and over here. So this shape here and this shape here and this shape here are all the same. And then we're coming up and we're crossing and we have our letter F. Oh, nice. Love it. He speaks French. Perfect. On va parler ensemble. We can speak together. It's perfect. Because I also speak French, right? So it's great. I figured he was probably French because it was like French pirate. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. I mean, if he has an IG somewhere, I didn't. Obviously, I'm not going to go dig through his stuff right now while I am streaming. But. Sweet. Now I'll try and catch him, actually. I'll be like, hey, we can talk calligraphy together. This is fun. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, cool. So the letter G is like the C. So we're doing a C curve. We're coming down. But we're not going all the way down. We're leaving a bit of space. And then we're coming here. We're kind of almost doing a line of universal beauty. But then we're coming back up again. It's a bit weird, my proportions. I'm us I usually do a G much quicker. So... There we go. That's better. This was too open. Did you see? It kind of almost looks like a weird Y. So don't do this one. This one's not good. This one's much better because this and this are parallel. We're closed. It looks like a G. If I wrote giraffe, we would know what it said. Whereas this would be, what is it, a giraffe? We're not sure. So H, the letter I, or sorry, GH first. Line of universal beauty. We're crossing, we're going up like it's an L, down and then away. Then a little compound curve to bring it into the H. There we go. Uh, it's a bit a bit widely spaced, to be honest. Actually, let me... There you go, that's better. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I, I, I am not offended <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so then we have our I. Line of universal beauty coming down here, little dot. A terminal dot, I think most people call them. So it's a, it's a little dot for me. A letter I. The letter J. Which is essentially like a big version of the letter I. <laughs> it's fun that he wrote your favorite pangram. Um, depending on how fast I can motor through the my magic skills, I can do it too, if you'd like. All right, I'm finding him. Sweet. I have now followed him. I mean, my Instagram isn't very big either. And not, my Twitch is also not very big, so we can be small creators together. Very fun. Thank you for sharing his thing. He must he must have just semi started because I uh, last time I checked was like a couple months ago and I didn't I didn't I didn't notice him anywhere because I usually look up just calligraphy to see if there's anyone else that I know. I'll be like, hello, hi. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Ah, thank you for the compliment. Lots of practice. 
That's it. Lots of practice. But, um, thanks. But, uh, he, he, from what, like, what I quickly saw, he does, like, uh, broad edge calligraphy things, which I am not good at and don't really practice ever. So, pointed pen, like, I will be, I'll be fine with, specifically copper plate, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, broad edge and gothic stuff is, like, pretty sick. I've just, I've never taken the time to learn it, so. All right, see, we're doing our K. So it's a line of universal beauty. Then we're kind of coming in at a weird angle over here, and then we're coming back up, compound curve away, and then a little, a little compound curve, just as a little fun little flourish on the left side there. And then we're gonna do an L. So it's a C curve down onto line of universal beauty, a like the D here and here. It's like a, a sideways oval. Technically, you're not supposed to break the baseline. I do, because if you're bringing it all the way out and you're trying to then add letters here, I find there's too much white space. So I just put it underneath and then like, let's say you're making the word love. You can kind of tuck the letter right into each other and it works out fine. No worries, it's fine. I don't mind the, the questions. I, I was just, it's an unexpected um, something that's coming in about half an hour and I was just like, oh, like I, act, I actively need to answer the door. So I want to make sure that I'm done so I don't have to like pause the stream and only come back 20 minutes later, do you know what I mean? So normally I would, don't care, it's totally cool. So don't feel bad about talking or distracting me. It's all good. All right, so the letter M so the letter M, I've been kind of using my letter A to base off the letter, uh, for the letter M. And I'll show you how. Because the letter M for copper plate, I've never liked it. I've, I, I can never do it properly, or even if I do it properly, I find it looks weird. So um, the letter M, I kind of, like I said, I kind of imitate how my letter A is. So I kind of do a line of universal beauty, but a little bit lower down. And then I go up and like this. So these two lines are very similar to these two lines and the fact that there's a bit of a step but I just wiggle it down and then I go up and here we go. Cool! No worries. You can just kind of hear, just listen to me talk. It's like Clubhouse but only me talking. <laughs> uh, cool, and then the letter N, kind of the same vibe. But like, I don't know, the letter N and M, I've, in magic fields, I'm just, I feel they always look weird. So we're doing, sometimes I just do it this way instead. I find that that's easier. And you can do the N this way too. So it's essentially like compound, uh, sorry, C curve, or bringing it down like a downstroke and we're doing a big compound curve on the end. Uh, and then this one I do a step because if you do them the same height, I find it looks like the McDonald's logo. So, you know, whatever you like. <laughs> it's fine, I'm halfway through the alphabet and I can zoom through it, I can do it. Keep your fingers crossed for me. And, and then O, so an O is a C curve coming up and we're just doing an oval. We're being conscious to make sure that the sh uh, the shading, the weight, is on the 55 degree. The P is a line of universal beauty, overturn, and then coming back at the um, at the waistline, kind of like a V, but we're just not going back to do an extra. A little little loopy loop. Then we're doing a Q, C curve. So it's essentially an O, but then we're having a little squiggle line. And then we have an R, 
Line of Universal Beauty, Overturn, and we're going here like, like we were for the P and the B, but instead of doing a loop or just stopping here, we're doing a little compound curve. So now we have an S. So this is a very traditional S that doesn't really look like much unless you're having it in a word, like a full word. Um, so sometimes instead of this one, I will do this guy, which is this, but I keep going. I find it looks more like an S or I'll start from the bottom. Also kind of looks like a treble clef a little bit like from music. Then we have the letter T, which is essentially the letter F, but without the crossbar. Then we have a U. So the U and the G are very similar. Can I get them on the screen at the same time? Mm. Here we go. And they're similar because this part here is almost identical to that part on the G. So very, very similar, but we're just, we're starting it differently, but this stroke here is like the G, and but instead of going this way, we're going this way. Very similar. If I were gonna put them into letter groups, I'd put those two right next to each other. All right, now we have our V. Which is kind of like the right portion of the letter, of the letter M, is the letter V. And then the W is kind of like, oh, whoops, I was way off camera on that one. There we go. It's essentially double V's instead of a W. <laughs> I'm very funny. So it's double V, uh, like it's the W. And then the X is essentially like the minuscule X, but just bigger. Um, so we're doing our first stroke is that way with no weight on it because we're coming in with weight there. And we don't want a giant puddle of ink right in the middle. Not cute, not fun, not cool. And then we have our Z, which is just a gigantic, gigantic little guy. That's it. Yeah, it's a very traditional X. Oh, you can absolutely ask, ask that. So the nib I'm using is an EF principle. Very, uh, very sharp, very flexible. And the ink is from Ferris Wheel Press. I, uh, I'm a sponsored uh, artist from them, which is fun. I feel so cool. And it's from, whoop, Ferris Wheel Press. It's Morningside Mint, which is cool. And that's the bottle. My husband said when, when I had gotten it, it, uh, it looks like a Christmas ornament. <laughs> My pleasure. The packaging makes me very happy. I'm a packaging. I love a good I love good packaging. So I was a big fan when they sent that to me. Uh was learning the oblique holder odd? Yes. <laughs> so I can tell you right now, this was expensive. You don't need an expensive one. Um the one that I I use a lot, honestly, is this guy. It's 14 bucks. It's a plastic one. As long as the flange itself is brass, doesn't matter. So it's so, you just have to get used to it. Uh, it does make working on a slant for me much easier. So uh, but yeah, it just it takes practice. Just lots and lots of practice. But yeah, I, uh, this, I, think, I think this one is like $12 on John Neal Books. That's it. It's not expensive. You don't need an expensive one. 
yeah, it just takes practice. Once you get used to the hold, and once you understand, like, when you're holding the, the pen, what's important is that the nib should more or less line up with the uh, slant of where you're trying to, like, this is 55 degrees, so you're trying to kind of keep that the nib at that slant. It's easier to do that for me specifically when I have an oblique holder than trying to use, um, like, a straight holder like this to do it. Uh, because I also learned on an oblique how to do calligraphy. So it's, for me, it's a lot easier. It's almost like just an extension of my hand at this point. So, um, but I do know uh, PA Scribes does not do copper plate with an oblique holder. He only does it with a straight holder and I don't understand how it works because I didn't learn how to do it that way. So for me, it's like a total mind, I was mind fuck, like for real. <laughs> on like, I don't understand how this works. So, yeah, that helps, I hope. <laughs> I hope that helps answer your question. And now, because you've been so kind, Mar, I'll do your, uh, your favorite, um, uh, your favorite pangram. Let me, let me scroll back up. Let me do that one. All right, you're gonna wish me luck that I spell this right on the first shot. Dactylographie. I E I think this is Ed. I think that's I think that's right. Yes, I think so. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I I'm like, did I spell it right? I think I did. Yeah, I'm good.
name your Is Emmy? Emmy is masculine. Cool. <clears throat> My eye is a bit weird because it's not on the baseline, but it's fine. Oh, and Wolf will go right in the middle. Hey, what uh, there we go. The pangram has been completed. My pleasure. I'm glad you liked it. And it's the perfect timing for me to get off stream because I, like, I'm pretty sure uh, the doorbell will be ringing in about three minutes, so it's perfect timing. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's perfect. I am going to switch back to this guy. I'm going to say thanks for stopping by. I'm not sure we're going to do Thursdays now, but I'm going to figure something out. Um, if not, I'll be back on Monday, at least. I'll be doing my lettering lyric series and continuing that. I think I'll be probably doing it more in the morning. Um, just, there tends to be more people around and I can just kind of chit chat and it's totally fine um, as well so uh, thanks a lot for popping by thank you Mar appreciate it and thanks for turning me on to another calligrapher on Twitch I'll be uh, stalking his next video for sure so um, thanks again stay safe and I'll see you guys next time bye